Hi, it's Friday, February the 19th, and I continue to read and wonder my way through Luke's gospel. And today we're in Luke chapter 8, verses 4 to 8, just, just a little bit, just actually a parable. Um, uh, last time we heard about some of the women who worked and served with Jesus, and that was really worth wondering about because we don't hear about them all that often. Uh, so we did that, but um, well, but now let's hear some of Jesus' teaching. So it's Luke 8, verses 4 to 8. When a great crowd gathered and people from town to town came to him, he said in a parable, A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell on the path and was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on the rock, and as it grew, it withered for lack of moisture. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. Some fell in good soil, and when it grew, it produced a hundredfold. And as he said this, he called out, Let anyone with ears to hear listen. So, there we go. Um, you've probably heard this parable before. Um, I'm not quite sure where to start. I mean, little things pop into my head because I, 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 I know the story. I know it fairly well. Um, in Matthew and in Mark's telling of the same thing, uh, the crowd was so great that Jesus got in a boat and went out from the shore a little bit, you know, creating that whole natural amphitheater and just getting a distance from folks so they could all hear him. Um, I don't know that that matters. It just that pops into my head. Uh, so, so, you know, Luke, Luke doesn't give us that detail because Luke doesn't know it, doesn't need it it doesn't add anything to the story for luke I, i'm not sure but it's it's not in luke's version as i say it's in in mark and matthews um i guess before we get into it well let's say this um the verses that will proceed from here like the next verses the ones we'll read tomorrow have jesus explaining what the parable means and I have all sorts of problems with that, and I'll tell you about that tomorrow. I just wanted to have the parable today. Um, and, and before I get into wondering about the parable, I just, maybe we need to talk about parables a little bit. Jesus teaches in parables. Um, and I will suggest to you that there is not unanimity um, among Bible scholars uh, among storytellers, around theologians, um, about what parables are. We know Jesus likes teaching in parables. Got it. Um, but what exactly is a parable? And some would say, well, parable, again, sort of from the Greek, um, uh, alongside um, parable. Uh, so it's kind of like... Um, uh, a story told alongside reality. It's not quite real, like it didn't necessarily happen, and yet there is a great truth in it. And, and, and that works for me. I mean, you've probably heard me, you've heard other people say, surely um, this may not have happened, and yet it is true. Um, so, so a story that, that, that holds a great truth. And so, so that, that works for some people. And they say, okay, so that's, that's what a parable is. Um, now, the, the Septuagint, um, so the Septuagint is um, uh, ancient. Uh, it is the Greek translation of, of the Hebrew scriptures, all right? So um, a lot of the people who became Christian um, and, and, and in the very beginning uh, and in the time of Jesus, um, they knew the Septuagint. So, so they, they, they knew the Greek text for the Hebrew scriptures, especially for the ones who, you know, weren't, weren't Jewish. Uh, they didn't read Hebrew, um, but they knew the Greek text. Now, in that Greek text, um, so before Jesus even, but certainly contemporary to Jesus, parabola, which is kind of the same word as, para, as parable, um, it includes, however, wisdom sayings and proverbs. And so it's not just narratives. It's not just stories told alongside the truth. So then there becomes a great discussion. Well, so then what is this? Was, oh, no, 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 no. That, that word overreaches. Well, okay. Uh, that word existed. Um, and 
Jesus did teach in parables, so maybe Jesus understood what those parables were. And by the way, as you're reading, um, as you're reading the Bible or listening to stories read from the Bible, and it says, and Jesus told this parable, and it'll be like one sentence. You're going like, how is that a parable? I mean, if it's supposed to be a story told sort of alongside the truth that reveals something quite meaningful, then it should be more than a sentence. And yet the Gospels will sometimes refer to something as a parable and just like, it's, it sounds more like wisdom saying. So is it a wisdom saying? Well, then, then why do the Gospel um, authors differentiate? Like what do they say? So Jesus told them this parable. And then Jesus tells them other things, but the authors of the Gospels don't recall them parable, don't call them parables. So, so what is it about a parable that's that's different? Um, one thing that I find kind of amusing, um, and it'll be more amusing tomorrow, I suppose. Uh, but anyway, one thing I do find amusing is that people say, "Yes, but you got to be clear: a parable is not an allegory." And I was, "Oh yeah, absolutely. Of course, it's not an allegory." Uh, why isn't it an allegory? Well, growing up, for me, as far as I understood it, and maybe it's because, you know, I read Animal Farm, I'm not sure, but allegories to me had animals in them. <laughs> and in fact, if you'd asked me when I was 25, um, you know, what's the difference between a parable and an allegory? I said, well, allegories have animals, and parables don't. They might, but they don't have to. Uh, well, okay, so then I'll go on and do some more education and, uh, Someone where along the way, pick up a degree or two uh, in, in classical studies and in Greek. And of course, realize that Plato's cave is an allegory and there ain't no animals in it. Um, but but Plato's cave as an allegory means it, it is a story that has a hidden meaning, it is another way of talking about reality. Right. So um, kind of metaphorical, symbolic. Symbolic. So the truth is found in it, but you've got to look at it. Okay. Um, but because I don't know, but that parable isn't, is not an allegory. Okay. Okay. Um, I actually agree with that. And that'll get me to what I think of parables. So, so I, I agree that a parable and, and allegories aren't the same thing because I believe an allegory has a specific meaning. And you might come to appreciate the depth of the meaning. Um, I mean, every time you read Plato's Cave, you get a, a, another sense, perhaps, of, of, of shadow and light and reality and, and uh, ideals and all of those kind of things. Um, but it's still pretty clear that this is a story about, about, about human existence and understanding. Um, so it has a meaning. And once you unlock it, you get it. So I would suggest to you that parables are different than allegories um, because they don't simply have one meaning. I believe they have multiple meanings. So when I talk about parables, I talk about like, well, like a parabola, right? So that, you know, a, a curve around a fixed point. Um, <clears throat> I mean, every time you come to it, it, it's a little different. It relates to the fixed point, but it's different. And in fact, a parabola throws things back at you. So for me, a, a parable uh, is a thing that makes me examine myself, puts me into, into, uh, into deep focus, right? That's the other thing a parable, a, a parabola does. It focuses, right? Um, and some of you are going like, Seriously, Norman, we haven't talked about parables since we were in high school. Uh, well, parables or parabolas since we were in high school. Um, but that's that's what a parabola does for us, like mechanically, you know, if you look at um, the headlight um, satellite dish, right? It, it, it focuses. Well, I think um, that these are all slightly connected in that a parable provides focus, but it invites me to focus. But the thing is, that wherever I move, it changes. So a parable can mean different things at different times, different things to different people. So you and I can hear the same story and hear different things. We can take that same story or that same bit of wisdom. So maybe it is just a sentence, but it's like, wait a minute. Oh, okay. What if I looked at it from this perspective? It changes the meaning. That perspective changes the meaning. The cave, that doesn't happen. The cave is the cave is the cave. Okay. Um, an allegory 
once you've puzzled it out, is an allegory. It, you know, um, it, it is. I mean, it's more than a riddle. It has greater depth, but but it but it sort of is that. Um, but for me, a, a, a parable is is a narrative. It is it is it is usually a story, but but it is it is something that brings focus, reflection on me, and it changes all the time. It is dynamic, and I think that's why Jesus likes teaching with them. All right, so. Um, so I, I, I am not, uh, I am not unanimous with, with, with my colleagues. Um, but I'm not alone out there either. So a lot of people, uh, see parables the same way I do. Uh, and when I see them this way, then they become very dynamic and important to me. Uh, and as I say, they change. So today's parable, for instance, a sower went out to sow his seed. Um, so are you the sower or are you the seed in the story? Because we're going to get to Jesus' description of it um, shortly and, and when, when we're, we're the seed. And that's, that makes perfect sense. So a sower went out to sow his seed. So if I think about it as the seed, uh, and as he sowed, some fell on the path and was trampled on, um, and the birds of the air ate it up. It's tough. It's tough living this world. Um, we don't always get to choose where we're born. We don't affect all the circumstances around us. Uh, we're on the path and sometimes we get trampled on and we get eaten by birds. Some fall on the rock and as it grew up, it withered for lack of moisture. And you know what? It, it, that does happen too. Sometimes life is so hard, we never really get a chance to grow. Some fell among the thorns. The thorns grew it, grew with it and choked it. And yeah, sometimes the things around me just make it impossible for me to flourish. Not just It's not at the hard ground. It's just there's so many distractions, so many other things, so many other things drawing on my energy, drawing on the things around me that then I, yeah, I just, I can't make it. And some fell on good soil and it grew and produced a hundredfold. So when you get it right, you grow and you produce. Yeah, that's, that's faith. Now, my own problem with that I don't seem to have any power. Seeds don't decide where they're thrown. Right? I mean, you're, you're, you're thrown there. I didn't decide to be born where I was when I was to my parents. You know, in the family I was born. I didn't choose that. Um, but I'll tell you, it has shaped an awful lot of my life. It has given me privilege and opportunity. It absolutely has. Uh, it has given me security. It's also provided me all sorts of different types of challenges. Um, and, uh, and, and, and there are times that it, it has, um, uh, my life situation has been liability more than asset at times, but overall, but I didn't have anything to do with any of that. It just happened. Other people were born in other situations. And so this sort of speaks to that, but, but if I'm just focusing on the seed, I don't know kind of suggests to me that it's all preordained because there's destiny and and i can't fight my fate i can't fight destiny it is all set in motion by god and i'm going to simply play out my part on whatever i land as my seed i didn't call the birds and i can't hide from the birds i'm a seed nothing i can do uh, now that can be reassuring for some people Takes a lot of responsibility off your shoulders. Whatever choices you make, well, it's not really your thing. You couldn't help it. You're just that kind of seed. Um, and and we will develop a really strong and in many ways beautiful theology, um, sort of in 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 Calvinism. Um, I don't want to just reduce Calvinism to predestination, but it certainly is a part um, uh, of that theology, and it's, it's wonderful. It's not mine. But because I believe this is a dynamic story and not simply an allegory, I go, okay, well, wait a minute. So a sower went out to sow his seed. What if I'm the sower? I don't know. God's the sower. We know that. God's always the sower. Yeah, no, no, but, 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 but what if I'm the sower? And I have, I have these gifts. I have, I have this love. I have this compassion. I have things that I can do in the world. And so, and so where I sow it, well, sometimes the, the I, I sow it on, 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 on a path that people trample on it and birds eat it up. Yeah. And sometimes I will love and do the best that I can 
on rock, uh, but it, 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 it won't take. Sometimes it falls among the thorns and the thorns grow with it and, and, and choke it up. And, and yeah, it didn't work. And sometimes it does hit good soil and it produces a hundredfold. And I think about that going, oh, wow. So then should I, should I just focus all of my efforts on the good soil? Like I'll just, I'll put everything I can into the good soil. Why would I throw seeds like on, on, on rocks or bad soil or on birds? Like, like why would I do that? It makes no sense. I should just put it on the good soil. Except this parable says to me that the sower didn't do that. The sower put it everywhere. So if the sower's God and puts it everywhere, but if I'm the sower and I want to be like God, I read this and think, okay, so... Sometimes I do need to, to love, to, to share my gifts um, in places that do not seem hospitable. Yeah, the birds. The birds eat it up. I, 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 I share love, wisdom, resources, whatever I do, and they take it and they take it away. But something they would have understood then, and I appreciate if I think about it now, birds eat seeds, and then they, well, they poop them out. <laughs> and then those seeds grow elsewhere. And then I start to think, well, so I, I never really know then what, what my gifts might do, what my kindness, what my, what, what, what my love that I dare to share with God's love that I share. I, 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 I can't predict how it will be received or where it'll be received. Sometimes you do something and it affects somebody that you think is totally unconnected, but they were watching or, or they heard about, or the person that you tried to help, even though it didn't seem to help them, they went somewhere and they carried that message and that word was heard and somebody got that and you have no idea. See, if I just keep my, 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 my seeds for the good soil, I am kind of being like God in my own version of God going, I'm going to just, just reward the good. I'm just, I'm just going to hedge everything so that I get my best investment. So I'm going to send my smartest kid to school. I'm going to keep his brothers, the other two brothers who aren't as smart. I can keep them at home because I need someone to help me out here. Well, no, but maybe everybody should be going to school. Maybe everybody should be helping. Maybe everybody should have all of these experiences and I don't want to streamline. So, oh, you know what? That 11-year-old's good at tennis. That's all I'm going to do is focus on tennis for that kid. No, maybe I want to uh, make sure that all of my children have a variety of experiences. Maybe I want to make sure I have a variety of experiences. Oh, man, I go to yoga. That's just a waste of time. I don't want to go to yoga. And yet you never know exactly what it is you might pick up. New experiences connect us in all sorts of ways. That's what I hear when I start to think of myself as the sower and where I'm throwing seed and why I'm throwing seed on ground that doesn't seem as good. I don't want to judge. Hey, I'm going to throw it on, 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 on dry soil. It's bad ground. And then a rainfall comes like I'd never imagined. Completely out of season. It's like, oh my God. Oh, I'm glad I did that. Yeah, I tell you how amazing it is for me to see these tulips that pop up in my front yard. I have no idea uh, how they got there. But boy, oh boy, when they pop up, it's like, oh, look at that. I don't recall planting anything there. Somebody did sometime, a long time ago. And yeah, I would have told you, you can't grow anything there. And yet, there it is. And then I start to think about this. Oh, okay, but what if... What if the sower is God and the seed is, is Jesus? It's the word that's being offered. And so I, now I start to think of myself as, as the soil. So I'm the soil. Well, if I let myself be walked on all the time, I never stand up for myself. I don't have a chance to live out my faith. Sometimes you just have to stand up and say, whoa, 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 whoa. Stop that. Don't walk on me. And sometimes I need to try to not be a rock. I need to be open. I need to just loosen up just a little bit. Open my stony heart. And sometimes I have to look around and realize I'm surrounded by thorns. 
And so the things that I do, these distractions that I surround myself with, these are keeping me from really growing in faith. I mean, I, I, I could be growing in faith, but oh, it's just so much easier to just sit down and have a drink. Who knows what those thorns are, but I can look at my life and go, oh, that's, that's a distraction. No, no, I want to be good soil. So, so maybe that becomes the story for me. Um, but you see, it changes every time. And, and, and when I hear the story, it, it, it hits me the way I am today. And it says something to me. I mean, based on the way I do these reflections and wonderings, I, I treat all of scripture as, as parable, right? That's the whole point for me is just to sort of wonder into it and see what it says to me today. At, at the end of it, um, at the end of the, the parable, I love it. it um, as he said this, he called out, he called out, he didn't just say quietly, he called out, let anyone with ears to hear, listen. It's not simply, hey, you, pay attention. Come on, what are you, you, you weren't looking at me. Pay attention. It's not that. I, I think it's, it's, it's the first century equivalent of, if you know, you know. She tells the story and people are saying, like, is this about birds? Is this about soil, about seeds and sowing? Or is, this, is this about farming? Like, what? why would you put, what is this? And Jesus says, you know, if you know, you know. Which is a way of saying, this has meaning. If you know, you know, and you'll think about it. And if you don't know, well, then stop and think about it a little more. Don't think about it as a farming text. <laughs> think about this and wonder what it has to do with you. If you know, you know. If you don't, you can. You can know. You will learn. Just spend some time with it. Anyway, that's what I get from it today. We're going to be looking at it again tomorrow because, as I say, the following text, the text that follows this, uh, is where Jesus explains what it means. Um, and you can understand why I'm going to have trouble with that. But I'll save that for tomorrow. For now, let me offer a prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you. Thank you for parables, Jesus' teachings. Thank you for parabolic moments that we can find focus, wonder what these things mean, let them reflect back on us and reveal to us the truth in this moment. Help us hear your voice speaking to us here and now, inviting us into our next moment. God, as we wonder, as we hear, let us grow in faith. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that's enough of me today, but I look forward to seeing you tomorrow when, as I say, we'll get into the explanation. Until I get to see you, God bless. Please, please know that means that God sees you and loves you exactly as you are where you are right now. And God's love not only surrounds you, but it moves through you into the world. It helps to shape the world. It helps to bring moisture to dry soil. It helps to bring hope to those who are feeling hopeless. The way that you are in the world matters. God's love moves through you and changes the world. So thank you for being you. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.